Hello everybody, this is JP3 here coming at you with a brand new series featuring the 2010 spin-off Halo game Halo Reach. We're going to be featuring all nine levels played on legendary difficulty. I will go through as much commentary as possible to teach you how to play this game and what I am now trademarking the 100% casual way. Now that may sound kind of strange, but these terms are actually based on two different concepts. The 100% involves uh, com uh, is a speed rain term that involves completing most or all of a uh, game somewhat as it would be intended to complete all levels of something. And then the casual part refers to, uh, at least at this point, simply it would be not speed running it. So 100% casual and put together means that you are completing the game as intended, trying to kill most if not all enemies, completing all objectives, not skipping areas or using exploits, uh, and then doing so in a without the intent of speed running the game, but playing it perhaps in some degree as the developers intended. And so that's going to be the point of this series. It's a like I say it's a brand new term I just made up. And so if you're looking to play this game without speed running or skipping or avoiding uh, certain things but at the same time want to be able to complete it successfully on the highest difficulty then you are at the right place so let's get started shall we now winter contingency as you know is the first mission in halo reach it is uh, one of the best first missions in the entirety of the halo uh, pantheon and so i hope that i'm able to bring a little bit of enlightenment about how to complete this mission and maybe uh, address some of its quirks i will not be uh showing the cutscenes and things of that ilk so i apologize if uh, you were hoping to see those things uh, i would be open to posting a some sort of uh, story mode type version of halo reach uh maybe without commentary if someone was willing to watch that I actually do have recordings of that as well on heroic difficulty that i might use one day for some purpose but um but if you if that's something you're interested in then please let me know otherwise i want to go ahead and get started on something that we're going to do right off the bat here so you will spend a mandatory i believe uh 40 Three or 44 seconds inside the helicopter I might be getting that time wrong um, but once you get out we are going to if you want to try to do this I want you to try at least after watching this to kill the invisible elite that only shows up on legendary difficulty as soon as you come down this platform start running angle about the way I've angling because that elite will come from where the uh, distress beacon is I am trying to shoot this guy now. Ideally, once I stopped him with the pistol and uh, de-shielding him, I would have killed him uh, much more quickly. But instead, what I did is I missed him a couple of times, shaking off a little bit of Halo Reach rust, and uh, had to gun him down with the assault rifle uh, from afar. But that is normally what you would have to do anyway. You can just do it a little bit quicker and not have to be as accurate with the burst firing. If you know how to speed run this level and do the slide jumps to catch him, that would obviously be the easiest way to kill him if you know how to do that. But that is something that's very hard to do uh, except for, uh, for seasoned speedrunners of Halo Reach. So I just wanted to show you how to do that without having to um, do that perfect... Uh, triple, I believe it's a triple slide jump, and uh, you can actually get close enough to possibly even assassinate him in that, uh, with that method. So once we go out of this building, there's going to be an opportunity to kill a skirmisher. I want to show you how to do that as well. As soon as you come out, put your reticle right around that tree, and if you can hit him right in the face, then you can shoot him a lot more easily and a lot more quickly than I just did. I did eventually get the headshot, but not after stopping him with a few bullets. Uh, so the action in proper, the proper action is about to begin. I shoot this window out. This window's already out, so I try to headshot him. One mistake I make here is I go for the uh, tank a little bit early there and ignore a uh, chance to maybe get a couple of headshots on these skirmishers. However, this is fine because what you want to do is you want to hang out up here and try to kill these grunts as they're coming in and before they get close enough to start causing you a little bit more trouble. Once you've had your field there and a meal moves out of your way, come down to here and you can throw a grenade in here as the game suggests you do, 
but on legendary difficulty, it may be hard to get any more than just a couple of kills uh, total. There's only three or four in there uh, if you... I think four total if you don't kill any that are coming in, so uh, you can save that grenade if you want to and just come down there and try to headshot them. As soon as you get the opportunity, you do want to try to pick up a plasma pistol. Uh, the assault rifle uh, outside of, uh, well, when you it's the only weapon available to you, the only secondary available to you, is pretty much useless in, in, in through a lot of Halo Reach. And so, a uh, plasma pistol, however, it has made a big comeback in Halo Reach in terms of its usefulness without having to use the overcharge. It reminds me a lot of the plasma pistol from Halo Combat Evolved. And as you can see here, it does a great job against these grunts who we uh, flank from the left. Now there's going to be a dropship that's going to drop off, I believe, five or six grunts right here. If you throw this grenade perfectly, you can kill up to five or six of them. But I threw that grenade and it didn't happen. Neither of those actually connected in the way I wanted them to. Um, that's a very hard throw to make because the grenades in Halo uh, Reach, the human frag grenades, are back to their weakest point. I would say close to where they were with Halo uh, two on legendary difficulty. There's not a lot of splash damage and in general they're not very strong weapons at all so the way you would get that kill obviously is by making a uh, darn near perfect throw. But no big deal. We've got a plasma pistol, we've got a headshot weapon, we can obviously pick up plasma grenades uh, along the way although they suffer from the same problem in terms of splash damage doing much uh, of anything at all unless again perfectly placed in the middle of a very tightly uh, grouped uh, group of grunts. So here is where we will be introduced to the massively more difficult than they've ever been before elites of Halo Reach. Uh, they are big, they are fast, they are scary, they throw grenades. So I notice how I hang back here and wait for my team to get into place. And the plasma pistol, if burst, or I'm sorry, if... Um, fired quickly and accurately can do a great job of chopping down shields because the overcharge is very much uh, it's probably at its most useless point uh, in the series history in Halo Reach. It does not track very well at all unless you get what's called a lock on and you will notice it in just a bit. Right now I am experimenting out of rust and forgetfulness with trying to get the lock ons but notice there how I have a lot of trouble getting to, completing the headshot on that elite, despite the fact that the uh, that bolt actually did lock on. Notice how many grenades, and notice the power the power uh, of the concussion rifle there. Uh, what I was going to say is, notice how many grenades get thrown at you by these uh, by these elites. So you want to be very careful in uh, approaching that battle. That is one of my uh, that is. If I was a little more practiced, that battle would have probably went a little bit better, and the way to make that battle go better than what you just saw would have, of course, been to not try a bunch of overcharges, but try to, uh, what's called pepper, pepper away with the plasma pistol until the shields are drained, then get the headshot. But all the while, uh, dodging grenades and a very powerful concussion rifle. One of the other weapons you saw there was the Plasma Repeater. I believe this is the only Halo where it is included in the weapon sandbox. It is one of the least scary weapons to face in the game and one of the most, uh, one of the least useful weapons to use. So we're going to hop into this uh, civilian style Warthog here and start splatting some enemies. Uh, I like to usually take a left turn here. And I will explain why we're going to go to every single place where the enemies have spawned uh, to, get to complete this 100%. And the best way to approach this initial battle is to come up from behind. One way to uh, have a chance to splat the very fast and agile skirmishers is as you're approaching them to start gently wiggling your stick back and forth. If you do that, then it can confuse the AI because they're reading your inputs and not actually seeing the vehicle. That's at least my personal belief. And so if you wiggle, they kind of get frozen and you have a chance to splat them, as you saw with three of the four skirmishers uh, there. If you come from behind here, you almost always get a grunt coming out right there. Uh, we unfortunately got two kills there but uh, because they were uh, tightly put together. But notice how quickly... The grunts throw grenades when you get in close quarters with them. Halo Combat Evolved, this is not. You need to be very wary of that. 
This elite will almost always charge through one, either one, uh, one of one of the two doors. Sorry, and um, it seems like it's a little bit rare for him to come through that door. Usually, he comes through this door that we're coming through now. And uh, if he's busy fighting against your enemies, you might have a chance to stick him or even assassinate him and make quick work of him. Otherwise, uh, you see what we did there. We ended up getting smart with our plasma pistol and peppered his shields off and then headshot him. We're in route. So there's almost always going to be skirmishers uh, guarding the entrances to these areas where you will find enemies. We are not going to let them get away. And Carter comes through with a headshot and we get a splat on the other one. So Carter with the headshot on the second one, I with the splat on the first. And I'm using the Xbox One DVR to record these, so you will see pauses once about every 10 minutes of, of gameplay time. Don't know if you saw there, but I kind of did that uh, little waggle to try to freeze them and was able to get a couple of really cool splats. We had a wreck, but I think it was totally, totally worth it. Now, the way I like to approach this battle is also from the back. Waiting for George to get on here, because we do want to have our invincible Spartan allies with us. They, Their bullet damage is a lot weaker on Legendary difficulty uh, than yours, or what you would imagine it to be. Now, there are there is an Elite and a handful of Grunts, the very same as the last area here. You can have the final of the three battles at this location, however, I don't like this location for that. I like the other location for that, so I usually come to this one next. We're going to try to catch this Elite off guard but with the Plasma Pistol, but we can't do that. So, I'm going to try to get a little funky here and pick up the underpowered Halo Reach Shotgun and see if we can't lure this Elite to us. Of course, I know what happens, and it doesn't work out as pretty as I would have wanted it to, but um, it was a lot more exciting and a lot more fun. So, I forgot exactly where the stairs were here, and so he comes up and surprises me here and gets a nice little foot to my face, and uh, as you can see there, the uh, elite melee damage is extremely overpowered in this game relative to yours, much less relative to the shotgun itself. Uh, one of my biggest uh, gripes with Reach, although I don't have many, is the overpoweredness of elites in close range. They are very, very difficult to deal with. So we use grenades and the plasma pistol to finish off this group out here. Well, that was more than a handful of grunts, wasn't it? I think that was five there, plus we uh, dealt with, I believe, one or two out here as well, so... Um, I do want to go back and get my pistol. I was, you know, generally just, you know, having fun with the shotgun there and wanted to show you it was there, just in case you want to uh, try to use it as well. Don't we have more important things to do than ground up strays? We don't leave people behind. You see those troopers? You let me know. There we go. And you've seen probably a number of health packs along the way here. This is a first level, of course, so you do get the opportunity to use health packs uh, a little bit more so than you will in other levels. They'll be more available, and so you can ha you can take a few uh, more risks. But on legendary difficulty, you have to be careful because, especially in close quarters with uh, enemies uh, that throw grenades or uh, can melee you once and knock your health, your shields down and your health down to a point where you need a health pack, which of course suggests that the next shot of any sort that you take is going to kill you. So taking this route, we go to the third and final battle that's available. That's one of the coolest things about Winter Contingency is you do have some options on how you want to face this. You can actually skip all of the battles but the final battle. Pick up the DMR here and start shooting away. Now I wanted you to see here how ineffective grenades are when thrown at groups. I threw that and got a stick on a grunt and even though they were all tightly packed it did very little uh, it was very little help other than to just kill one enemy. Noble leader, be advised. I have visual on inbound covenant options. Evac transport, keep your distance. Six, hold position. Clear an LZ. Spartans. Corporal Travis, sir. Three Charlie. It's the Covenant. We know, Corporal. Let's get you out of here. Tuning fork in <laughs> I do have the I would have been your daddy's skull line. I believe the iron skull line. Uh, 
if you heard that, one of the uh, Marines uh, said tuning fork inbound as opposed to the, calling it the dropship or the spirit, which I thought was kind of funny. I didn't remember hearing that before. So as you can see, this is the best place to approach this battle. Uh, it's from these barrels over here. Uh, it's a nice flanking position away from where a lot of the fire and a lot of the attention will be going, which is towards George and the surviving Marines. Notice how we throw a grenade into a pile of enemies there and get zero kills. Not saying that you shouldn't try to fire grenades, but don't expect them to be uh, as godly as they are in Halo 3 or in Halo Combat Evolved and perhaps even Halo 4. So we de-shielded him beforehand and we finally got the headshot on him. We're going to mop up the grunts here with the plasma pistol and be on our way quite soon. Even though I do complain about the grenades, uh, it is a good idea to make sure that you're stocked with them. And we have full plasmas and I believe there's a potential if, uh, if marines have died, which they usually at least one or a couple of them will. Uh, that they may drop grenades, so you can look around for them as long as you want. I end up, I believe, looking around for uh, more DMR ammo potentially around that body. I don't find it, but I do happen to stumble across another grenade, so I'm full up on grenades. Last complaint about grenades, you can only hold four in this game at any given point, any given time. That is by far the least of any Halo game. Noble 2, sit rep. We're at the relay outpost. Doors locked. Can you beat it? I'm not sure exactly why that was. That I thought was what made Halo uh, Combat Evolve so great was the uh, what I call the what people have called the Halo Triangle. But alas, we will make do with what we have here. I still love Reach. It is probably my second favorite campaign behind Halo Combat Evolve's original campaign. So. Um, it's a complaint that I I lodge only because I love it and I wish it was just a little bit better, a little bit more like the original in that sense. So we've uh, as a first mission, perhaps we've got a couple of different areas, uh, or well, I guess literally a couple of sections: the initial section, and then this section where we're just kind of hanging out, riding. Uh, back in the day when this came out, these graphics were absolutely stunning for this system. So um, it's actually pretty cool, a pretty cool introduction uh, during your first couple of pay playthroughs. But ultimately, your patience starts to wear a little bit thin with having to take these mandatory rides. That all being said, time to hop off now. Um, I will not complain about the grenades here. This is just a bad throw. It goes, actually, that was a great throw. Uh, the second one actually does the trick. But uh, the first throw was actually thrown perfectly. It bounced up and above the shields of the jackals. It did not get any kills, uh, but the second grenade did get three kills there. Carter standing in the way makes it impossible to kill that jackal as fast as I would have wanted to. Thanks a lot. I love Carter as a character, believe it or not, but don't confuse these characters with the uh, ridiculously annoying at times AI that uh, controls them in gameplay. So I'm going to do the 100% casual thing, as I termed it earlier, and I'm going to wipe out all of the enemies in this area before we go inside that door. And the best place to do that from is over here. You can catch enemies coming off the dropship. Kind of cheesing it here. Those grunts get smart and start running away from where I'm shooting. But notice how we have a nice flanking position from over here, and we're also not in the immediate... Uh, line of fire a lot of the concentrated fire a lot of the enemies are going to be concentrating their fire towards the uh, door over there now we've got a second wave it has skirmishers we want to try to take out as many of them as possible because they do have needle rifles and present a problem for uh the player especially if they land a headshot this is uh i'm not sure how many halos have true headshots but this one does so if they use the needle rifle uh, on you whenever you're de-shielded, they can headshot you. Notice how this grenade sticks this elite major, just a good old elite major, not a minor, but not exactly an ultra. Stick him, do not get rewarded for that at all unless you count uh, the assist I gave to, uh, the assist I received, uh, because one of my uh, AI was actually able to take him down. Very frustrating and very annoying, it is not easy to stick enemies in this game relative to other Halos, in my humble opinion. 
So notice how we're using the plasma pistol and even grenades to try to put as much pressure as possible on this area. Uh, we've got spec obsoletes. We have an elite general with a sword that will not come past a certain point in this threshold most all of the time. Uh, for some reason, that plasma bolt tracked to the truck instead of the general, but no matter, we get him on the next uh, attempt there. So we've taken down most of the scary enemies, uh, except for the skirmishers and I believe one more elite. So normally the tuning fork up there will fire uh, a lot of concussive uh, blast at you. I mean, truly, this is a very strange occurrence here. If you notice me kind of getting a couple kills and then hopping back into cover, it's because I hear the concussive blast and think they're going to be shooting over here. They almost always do. Your uh, enemies are not, your, uh, the friendly AI are not usually successful in distracting them. The, I have, I don't remember the last time I've been killed by a banshee in this area. They almost, they seem very benign. Uh, it's possible, I think I've seen maybe a couple of banshee bombs go inside or towards the door when I've been inside the door, but I typically do not worry about them, and they typically tend to get stuck at some point. We'll notice that in a little bit. So once you run out of DMR ammo, you can almost, for the most part, be finished unless you find another drop for them, because if you go inside the door to try and collect that DMR ammo, uh, the door will uh, start to shut, and the level will proceed forth here. At any time during this fight, um, after Cat says, just about now, you can go inside the door and it will begin to shut and you can be safe. But if you want to complete this the 100% casual way, then you will take down all of the enemies out here. So I am, at this point right now, trying to figure out a way to kill this elite without, don't know why that did not lock onto him without using the DMR headshots, but I find some DR, DMR ammo lying on the ground, which was really cool. And so I'm going to find this guy. He's going to die. I'm not going to let him live. I'm not, I've not come this far. So there he is right there. We're going to get a nice little overcharge and headshot him. So I believe that's all of the enemies, or at least I believe that was all the enemies, and then look what I find. I find a banshee stuck. Now this is a very common place for it to be stuck. Unfortunately, I don't have any plasma grenades, nor am I finding any to collect. I forget about the plasma rifle over there, which would easily chew it apart, and instead decide to go with the plasma pistol here. And it doesn't do a great job of taking it down at all. There is actually different damage, uh, I guess damage uh, weakness or weakness too, that uh, involves uh, when you compare the plasma pistol to the plasma rifle on these vehicles. It, really is odd. You would think it would be about the same, but it is not. So bullets do damage to armor uh, a little bit better uh, than plasma does in Halo Reach. I think that's kind of a staple in some of the newer Halo games, maybe some of the older. I'm not really sure. Uh, please leave in the comments uh, questions about that. I'm always interested in those kind of things, but in Reach, uh, bullets are much stronger on armor than plasma uh, on average. And plasma on shield, stronger than bullets. Blah, blah, blah. If we flush any hostiles, they're yours. This little piece of dialogue here, I'm not sure how to trigger it consistently, but most of the time it does not trigger, and usually you just get you and the uh, other Spartan 3s just standing around silently. So, as you can see there, there are some uh, enemies. You can see maybe that grunt... Um, just sitting right there. A lot of people try to blow up these tanks early. I usually refrain from doing that, and the reason why is because if you kill enough enemies, this zealot will run away, and you will have to face two zealots in the final uh, in the final section. I would rather face one at a time, and so I instead focus exclusively on the zealot who is now de-shielded. Once he's done, then I start taking out these enemies with grenades, and by whatever means possible. In this case, I don't have a great shot on these tanks, and I don't want to get stuck with a grenade um, or lose my shields to a, and then super combine. So, I play it safe and only take out the one tank, which doesn't do much damage. But of course, George and I will be able to mop these guys up pretty easily. So, I like to go ahead and get a plasma pistol at some point. No, that's right, I went with the needler. Needler strats, baby since there was enough of it lying around. So we're going to use a combination of grenade sticks 
and the Needler to wipe out these uh, jackals and grunts. Because why not? How fun, huh? The Needler tracks pretty decently when you have Red Reticle. Um, and especially if you burst fire it, it tracks really well in this game. But you do need to be close up. It's not going to track across the map. Um, kind of reminds me of the Plasma Pistol in that regard. Alright, so for this final section, since There's we more. took out that um, out. Zealot, we're going to have four Grunts and one Zealot with a sword. We kill all four Grunts with that grenade, thank goodness. And so now we've just got the Zealot. Now he is scary because he's fast and he has a, a one-shot kill sword. But the real scary thing is when he decides to stop on, a stop on a dime and throw a grenade at you. So you definitely want to be very wary of that. However, we are fortunate in the sense he is focused on George. And we take him out with an easy noob combo. Or elite combo. And once he is dead, all you do is reset this junction and the level ends. So that's it for Winter Contingency, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, any issues or concerns, please leave them down below. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this kind of content, and I will uh, certainly uh, put out more of it. Um, but that's it. I, that's all I got for you, really. Um, this is JP3 signing out. Uh, up next will be Oni Sword Base. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you very, very much for watching.